why do we see so few women at the top of the corporate ladder? Is it because they are less capable? Or is there a hidden factor at play? Some say that to reach the pinnacle, you have to kill yourself, working between the age of 27 to 37. But here's the catch. During this crucial career building period, women often face a life-changing event. Can you guess what? When you look at the top 20% of the society, the gender imbalance is obvious. It is not because women lack the capability. They in fact go toe to toe with men in terms of skills and performance. But when it comes to reaching the absolute apex, the top 5%, we see a stark difference. Top professionals often say that to reach the apex, you need to grind through your late 20s and 30s, working 18 hours a day to really get ahead. But for women, this period often overlaps with a significant life event. Can you guess what it is? It's childbirth. It's a defining moment that impacts their career trajectory while men can continue working on their relentless schedule, women often have to take a step back. Not because they want to, but because of the current societal norms and the lack of support, which makes it very difficult to do otherwise. So why should it always be women who suffer the career impact of having a child? Now the studies in countries where same-sex marriage is more common show that in those couples, both the partners often share the responsibility of taking breaks from work to raise children. In these cases, the career progression is less likely to be hindered for just one partner. But in heterosexual relationship, it's almost always the woman who sacrifices her career. Why do we accept this imbalance? This isn't a zero-sum game of choosing between family and, and career. It's a reflection of how the society expects women to shoulder the majority of the child-rearing responsibilities. Corporate structures and the societal norms reinforce this disparity. High-powered carriers demand full-time dedication when women step back, even briefly, to bear and raise children they miss out on the critical networking, projects, and career-defining moments. Meanwhile, men continue to climb the ladder uninterrupted. The issue is not that women are less capable. It is just that the system isn't set up to support them through these life-altering changes. This isn't just about individual career choices also. It's about reshaping societal norms and corporate structures. If we start recognizing and addressing this imbalance, perhaps we will see more women in the top 5%. So what do you think? Should we change the way we view career and family responsibilities? Share your thought in the comments and follow for more discussions like this.